We did it. We are selling ammo. Nazoammo.com. We teamed up. Keystone Munitions, quality, premium product. We're selling it online. What do you do? You go to nazoammo.com. First thing that pops up, what's this? It's an email list. What's the email list do? It's going to give you access to promo codes. It's going to give you access to events, T-shirts, apparel, everything we're doing. Get on that email list. You want 45? 45 is not on the website, but then it's coming in. You're ahead of the curve. You're ahead of the guy who's just finding out about it. You're a part of the family. Very fast and furious how we do everything around here. Nazo Ammo. We are moving Keystone Munitions. Premium products. We're doing it. You want to pick up? You don't want to have it sent? You're Carl. You live down the road? Pick up Nazo at the promo. Promo code at the end. Now you're picking up ammo here. We're doing it, man. We are doing it. Nazo Ammo. www.nazoammo.com. Small town. Big ammo. Finishers MMA, finishersmma.com, at finishers. That's how you find them on social media. These guys have a show with us every Monday called Now We Go. You can check it out. Zach, JM, Thor, Grace, there's too many to name that come out of that school, and they are killers in the game. They are the biggest MMA jiu-jitsu school in the area, and they are owning the East Coast. You can contact them at 610-438-0746. Ask for Andrew. They are at 3761 Nicholas Street in Easton, PA. They have two locations as of now, Bethlehem and Allentown. They are growing into three, four, five, six. They, I would say they are taking over, but they already have. Check them out on all of their social media. They are awesome to follow. And if you're looking to get in shape, you're looking to choke people, you're looking to do anything at all to better your life, finishersmma.com. All oh, valleyrooter.net. That's not how you pronounce it all the time. I just say it that way. All Valley Rooter, Jared LaBarba. He is my plumber. He's the show's plumber. I'm getting him plumbing business all over, and I love that he is getting what he wants. He has 24 hour emergency service. He is certified, insured, and professional. You can follow him at All Valley Rooter. He's on social media, and you can find his information at allvalleyrooter.net. Jared came down down over the weekend and he fixed a problem down here. He's super professional. I love him as a person. I love his business. He grew it and uh, he's doing his own thing. Um, it's allvalleyrooter.net. It's 24 hour professional plumbing services. He can help you out with everything you need. It's 610-762-1656. He's certified, insured, and professional. Do not be afraid to contact him for any of your plumbing needs. Support Jared. Jared supports us. Luke Delmeyer Handmade Custom Knives. Uh, I love Luke. It's LukeDelmeyer.com. He's a farrier, a bladesmith, and a blacksmith. He has custom knives, and the best part about it is you can take classes to make them. So not only can you take a class to learn how to make knives, at the end of the class, you get that knife. We're working on a project together. He started uh, recently getting into chef knives, so he's starting to make chef knives. He makes hunting knives. He can make any of your needs as far as blacksmithing. That's at Luke Delmeyer on Instagram. That is the best way to follow him. You can see all the stuff that he's posting. He shares, he does raffles, he gives giveaways. Check out all things Luke Delmeyer at LukeDelmeyer.com. We've had him on the show before. You can dig down in the library, listen to how he got started and where he's at now. I'm excited to work with Luke. Uh, he's a really good friend of the show and I'm excited to showcase his chef knife that he's making me. Check out all things Luke Delmeyer at LukeDelmeyer.com. Farrier, bladesmith, blacksmith. Rips Auto Detail. This guy is the best, hands down, in the area. I've interviewed him. I know his story. He's doing things that others aren't, and I'm, I love that he fucks with the show. I love getting the best of the best and having them support and be a part of this. That's what the sponsorship is for. I'm giving you the best people in their profession, and Rips is the best at Auto Detail. It's at Rips Auto Detail for Instagram. You follow that. He's showing you the different cars he does, and it's at 630 
North Nelson Street in Allentown, PA. He offers paint correction, ceramic, SPS coatings, and more. This is appointment only, and it's ripsautodetail at gmail.com. You can call him at 484-553-1366. I tell you, follow him. If you you, you don't know, you want to know more about what he does, follow him on Instagram. Follow Rips Auto Detail, and you can see all the things that Rip does. He's a big part of the show. We have a, a separate show we do called Road Dogs, and you can check out his past interviews and hear his whole story. Uh, I couldn't recommend this guy more for your auto, car, boat, plane. This guy literally has done everything, and he is the best in the area doing this. Rips Auto Detail. Welcome, my friend. You brought a dinosaur with you. Um, the name of the dog is Lucero, and you run and own and operate Lucero K9. Yes, it's it's more like a hobby. Switcher. <laughs> I don't want to do this. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the conversation. Dude, I did it yesterday, and then I looked up, and I'm like, oh, my God, the whole interview's just been my stupid <laughs> mustache, and then I had to go over. Sorry about that. So uh, you own uh, Lucero K9? Yeah, it's more, you know, owning it. I don't, I don't know what you mean by as far as owning it. I mean, I have the. It's interest. just your business. Yeah, it's it's more like a hobby, so to speak. Yeah. Um, you know, I learned uh, training, you know, with dogs when I was younger. Um, you want to know how like I started, how I got yeah, into it? As absolutely. A kid? So like as a kid, I was 16, just got my car. I'm like, I'm getting a fucking dog. I'm like, I'm going. Yeah. I want a pit bull. You know what I mean? So I went and. Um, I went with this girl that I know. She was a friend of mine. It was a, a friend's girlfriend. She was, I think, like 22 at the time. She's like, let's go up. I know somebody that has these pit bulls. And we were like Strasburg or something. So I bring home this pit bull. My mom's like, what the fuck? You're still in school. How are you going to take care of this dog? Obviously, you don't think when you're 16. You know, you do impulsive shit. So I had this dog for a couple of weeks. And um, I'm like, I'm going to train. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then I was like, eh. So I'm going to school. My mom's maybe right. You know, maybe I shouldn't, um, I shouldn't, I shouldn't work with dogs yet. I should just kind of wait. So then I found a friend that was going to take the dog and, and, um, you know, give the dog a good home. And then I ended up, you know, going to school, doing my thing. And then I, I got back. I'm probably around 23. I got another dog and then that dog passed away. And then Pitbull again. Yeah. Another pit bull. Yeah. And then, um, I got a boxer and I was doing, I was building cell phone sites. I was going all over the place building cell phone sites. And I was in, um, where the fuck was I in Jersey? Somewhere in Jersey. It was like in the shit part of Jersey. I go into a Wawa and there's a sign on the, the door. It says two boxers free to good home. So I called the guy and I ended up taking the two boxers. One went to a friend of my mother's. I took the boxer. When I was at the guy's house, the guy's house was destroyed. I'm like, I'm going to get this dog and it's going to be a fucking nightmare. <laughs> I, bring, I bring the dog home. I was at my parents at the time. I bring the dog home. First thing he does is piss on the plant in the corner of the house. I'm like, fuck, this isn't going to go good. <laughs> Did your mom and dad see him do it? Yeah, yeah, that's all. I'm, I'm like, he's just, make, he's just making his house his. Don't yeah, worry yeah, about yeah. it. This is normal. Yeah, it's normal. It's, don't worry about I it. I do this on the weekends. <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. And at that time, I had, um, I don't know if he's a mutual friend of ours, but Brett Easterday, I don't know if you know of him. He's He's got all mutual friends of, yeah. you know, Mike Panic and all the other guys, Eric Butch and whatever. You had a bunch of these guys on the on your show, but um, so Brett used to uh, co-own Consummate Canine Training with a guy named Dave Baumat, and Dave was always into Malinois, and that really interested me. All the bite work, um, you know, you have your personal protection stuff, your Schutzen, your Sport, your Mondio ring. There's so many different, you know, PSA sports, all types of sports for dogs. Um, so then I just started learning, you know, basic obedience type of stuff, working with Brett. Um, I really like the bite work aspect of it, the control work. How know. did you find people to get involved that was doing all this stuff? Brett, I kind of just ran into at a, a friend's house. And, and then we it was just, just a common thing yeah, where you're like, hey, look, I'm like trying yeah. to get this dog to behave a specific way. Yeah, well, we were just shooting a shit about dogs. And he's like, oh, well, you know, I was in, I believe Brett was in the Air Force and he was a dog handler at the time. Um, and he had a shepherd when he was in the service. And then he had um, another dog. Um, why am I thinking his dog's name is Marty? No, it's not Marty. It's um, Gordy. Gordy was his dog. That was a Malinois. It was really nice. And that was the first time I put a bite suit on. Um, and when I took a bite from that dog, and you really didn't know what the hell you were doing. I mean, it was just fun. You just put the suit on, let the dog, you know, attack you or whatever. And Brett knew his dog. He knew the type of dog that he had. Um, and Brett, we were hanging out for a while. He would take me on, you know, different 
training episodes that he did, you know, like home invasion type of stuff. There was a guy that had two Dobermans that he wanted to test out. Um, I had a female. How do you get into that situation? Now, he wants to test that out, so you have to go there with the suit, and then uh, he or, sees how the dogs react with you breaking in? Yeah. Or like he, a mock break in? Yeah, because really, I mean, now... I've learned a lot more since then. Yeah. You know? And then, you know, how life goes. Brett had, you know, his family stuff and his, you know, he's still involved with dogs somewhat, but, you know, he had another daughter and everything. So, um, you know, him and I, we would go to New York a couple of times. We got into like the Connie Corsos. Um, and then I just went further and further with it. I met different guys being up in New York. I met guys with the Connie Corsos, which are, you know, Italian Mastiffs. Um, and those guys were doing a bunch of sports stuff, which is, it's more of a charade sport you know, your shoots and stuff, it, obviously you got to know what you're doing, you know, the performance wise, you know, there's trainers that do amazing stuff, shoots and, but it's not theoretically like what I want to do. I like the personal protection type of stuff. I like the dogs that are like, you know, just more civil fly under the radar type of deal, more your wingman. Um, so being up in New York, I learned all that stuff. Um, was in the course was for a while. I had two of those. Um, then I met another guy, Lawrence, who he is L.A. Hard Hund Canine Academy. So Hard Hund is hard dogs in Dutch. Um, and Lawrence, his father used to own a security firm firm in Trinidad. He used to supply dogs for like the uh, the airport, the police, and all that. How the fuck that. do you get into doing that? I, you know, it, I have no, <laughs> Lawrence grew up in it. Like, like well, it's that, interesting hearing you yeah. kind of like pop through it and yeah. you run into these people. But how the hell did those yeah, but those people? guys too? Like, they, there's families of dogs and then they breed them and then they sell them for yeah tons and their lineage just lives on. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you you got if you go base, well, you look back in like ethology and all that stuff. Like everything's domesticated from the wolves and all that. And yep. you know, so you see how a lot of these dogs have changed over the years. Have changed. There was yeah. a there was a short film I watched on that, and they were like looking at some of these dogs and how they just it's a shame like poodles used to be really massive and they yeah. were vicious and then they turn them in these fuzzy little bunny things yeah. and like even dachshunds were were longer and they would send them into sheds to go get you know attack people and attack rats and yeah. stuff but everything's been kind of just changed mm -hmm. over the years yeah i mean you look at the old school the old school rottweilers the old school yeah. dobermans like even your serbian line dobermans some of those are so um like even dominant aggressive you know you can even have a lot of the dogs coming up the leash on you um if you give the dog a harsh correction it's going to correct you back um you know there's a lot of problems too you see a lot of people getting bit and that's why you know we always say it's not good to have your dog on the sofa or the bed especially when you have kids because you never know what's going to happen we've seen it with a chihuahua bit up a kid, you know, a hundred stitches in his face. Well, yeah, they, they think it's their house. Yeah, like that's their the, area yeah, and they've they become, made it. Yeah, yeah. They become more entitled. Um, yeah. I know a guy that has a pit, <laughs> he had a pit bull and, uh, he did, the, the mailman refuses to go. He'd yeah. go into his office because the one day he walked up and he, the, the dog's always very pleasant always comes over and he pets him and everything. And one day he was on the chair and yeah. he walked over and goes, Hey, how are you? And put his hand out and done. just yeah. done. Over. I get pictures all the time. I you know, there's another woman that I know that trains a lot, and she's like, "Well, guess where I had to go today?" And she sends me a pic, a, a fingertip with the fucking ligaments all the way to the <laughs> elbow in a paper towel. I'm like, "What the fuck is that?" And she goes, "I just got called to um, a mailman went to deliver a box, and the pit bull was outside, and it chased the mailman starts running, and he's yeah. boogieing down, and it's fu well and now it's a target. Now yeah, it's a game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So now it's a, yeah. prey. So now yeah. the dog grabs a hold of his finger and it fucking ripped it right yeah. out from his elbow. It's I like, uh, I was a mailman for a little bit, and I, there was a couple. Um, there was two instances, and what's funny is they lived across the street. The one guy just had a dog you could tell that just didn't listen to anyone, and he would just let it out and be like, "It's fine," and the dog would be like, yeah. and "I'm like." Fuck, because they. Well, that's always the, that's always the best people when you go by their house and like. Yeah. We used to go to the dog He's park. He's fine. You'd sit yeah. there and these dogs, you could tell they're aggressive towards yeah. other dogs. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to act, and he'd go, "They're all right. He'll be fine. They'll work it out." Right. Yeah. No, they don't work it out. Mm -hmm. That dog's an asshole. And they t they teach yeah. you in class to just uh, to to stick the package in front of you. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And I'm just like, what? I was like ready to jump on the top of the dude's car. Like I was like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah. And then the second one was uh, the guy had two. Uh, 
two German shepherds, and you could just tell they, they didn't seem friendly. And I pulled up, and I love dogs, and the first time that I had a reality check that every dog isn't like your dog at home mm -hmm. was being a mailman. Exactly. And you start yeah. learning that people don't take care of the dog like I did, or you know, or, there's, or these people have the dog for... Uh, protection mm -hmm. or to watch the house and that's what they're there for. It's not a fucking let's yeah. throw a Frisbee. So yeah. I, I, I took a step and he goes, do not come any further. And I said, oh, all right, man. I said, you get a lot of packages. I said, I don't know how these dogs are. And he goes, they don't like people coming on the property. And I said, all right, I'll be leaving your shit at the end of the driveway. And I was like, you cool with that? And he's like, yeah, man. He's like, seriously, don't come on the property or it'll mm -hmm. be a problem. Yeah. And he's like, not, not, he wasn't being like a dick. He was just letting me know that if I did something out of the ordinary, the dog would attack me. And I was just like, cool, dude. Here's your fucking Amazon yeah. shit. I was like, fuck this yeah. guy. I'm throwing it out the window from now on. Yeah. But it was sketchy every time mm. I went over there. So, there, I mean, there was a couple of things. We had an incident like that. Well, I'll tell you, too. So for Jesse, right? So yeah. like you said, well, the dog's an asshole. He ran out. Typically, I wouldn't say the dog's an asshole. I would be like, well, the, 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 the handler or the owner's an asshole. Is an the asshole. Dog, and, and they, yeah, well, the I, dog's yeah. doing what he's supposed to do. But yes. the thing is, if you know you have an aggressive dog or you know the dog's not good around other dogs, just fucking leash the dog. Yeah. You know? Or like yeah. if you're going to go, yeah. go, don't go to a dog park. Like if you're. Well, yeah, you well, I guess I've learned a lot over the years, and you can, for what we do when we have dogs and they do, uh, they look for missing kids and stuff yeah. like that. So search and recovery dogs. But during just being around them and hearing them and discuss everything and dogs pick up on people's energies. Oh, yeah. So like we just had somebody who went who took off and we went and found the little girl and we went and they brought her dog to her. Mm -hmm. The dog is great. Last time I saw the dog, the dog licked me so much. I was like, you have to get this dog away. Like my pants are soaking wet. Like you just licking my leg. <laughs> I was old, like, old salty well, this time, job. you know, I stayed away. I got down. I said, hello, how are you? He flipped out, and I was like, okay, well, he's picking up on her nervous energy mm -hmm. and is now in protection mode. I'm not allowed mm -hmm. to go there. But yep. when you go to the dog park, you can pick out the people. Yeah, I mean, I don't want – I hate to blame the dog, mm -hmm. but there are dogs sometimes that do not – will not listen. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? But uh, you, you, you can tell the people that they're just never done anything, never mm -hmm. tried. Like, at least our dog – um, he's an asshole because he does things because he knows. Mm -hmm. Like, he'll do – like, he'll just – He'd just fuck with you. Like you take him, let, let's go out and I'd take the leash off. He'd run around, start bolting around. Right. Mm -hmm. And then he would look at you and I go, all right, let's go. Like it's time to go. And then he would stop down and look at you. And if you walk towards him, he'd run away and come back, like make mm -hmm. you want to chase him. And I go, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave. Mm -hmm. So I got my Jeep and started driving up the street and he's just looking. And then all of a sudden he just starts bolting coming up and I'm like, you're just doing shit. Like here's another end. So he, he we got the dog from the pound. He was He's fine. going through Bethlehem, eating from all the dumpsters. It's a wine runner, so it's mm -hmm. not the dog you find the people usually let go on the street. Mm -hmm. So he's he was going through dumpsters, so they found him. And not only he, he's a blue wine runner, so he's not that light gray. He's a darker mm -hmm. color, so it's really rare. So we got him, and he just kept knocking the fucking garbage can over. So we put locks on the on the thing, and it just you just get into it, just tear it apart. So we got those things for for cats. That it's a CO2 canister mm -hmm. with a battery, and it has a, a, like a, a perimeter. So once it gets close, it'll beep. And if you go closer or don't move, it just goes and shoots air. Mm -hmm. So it's enough to scare them, like, for mm -hmm. cats to flip out. Yep. We put it on top of the garbage can. He walked up to it, kind of looked at it. It bounced. He bounced back, kept going closer, bounced back again. So he'd go, and it would go beep, 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 beep. And then he would sit down right on the barrier when it would stop beeping. And he would just stare at it. And I go, well, I'm going to work. And I came home, and the whole canister was on the ground, all the garbage <laughs> everywhere. That fucker went through a whole can, yeah. like 300 shots of air. He just tested it all day mm -hmm. long. Yeah, they're not stupid. They, no. They, they learn a lot of things. I mean, it goes, you can even teach a dog to open the refrigerator door. Oh, mine did that piece because he stole food. But. You know, so it's all just marking it. And yep. then, you know, it's. So the other story that you were saying yeah. about the mailman, you know, being a mailman, we had another one. Well, so after, like, with the whole, like, Working with Brett, consummate canine training and all that. Dave ended up moving to Texas. Brett, you know, it's, you know, I started doing my own thing and, you know, work and life. Were and you everything. working with just your dog at, primarily at that time? Or were you learning how to handle dogs with other people and helping to, them? Yeah, I was learning, like, different breeds, too. Yeah. So, like, Malinois, Dutch Shepherds, Shepherds. Um, you know, I always like bully breeds. Like, Dogos, Dogo Argentinos were the dog that I always Would you just liked. work, those, and then this those, is what you did those, as soon as you got out of work? Yeah. Those yeah. The Argentinos, aren't those the dogs that have, like, the really, like, solid face, like, really wide face? 
with like the pointy ears. You well, know what I mean? The ones you see like typically on like t-shirt designs and stuff. Like they, yeah. they tend to say they're bull or they're pit bulls, but they're yeah. not. Yeah. Is a lot that- of people, I mean, pit bulls always have that image. You know what I mean? The crop yeah. image, the bulky type of face. Yeah. Dogos are kind of like a pit bull on steroids. Yeah. You know, when you look at them, you know, they're just, they're big. Where are um, they from? Was it Argentina? Argentina, you yeah. Know, they were bred originally for mountain lion and boar. Yeah, you know, so that's crazy. Um, they're they're strong <laughs> dogs. They're hard dogs. Um, they're they're not a typical pet dog. I mean, obviously, you have a lot of breeders that will breed, and you can have companion dogos, but they're they are a working breed. So yeah. you got to know what you're getting. You know, there's a lot of conflict in the breed too. They're bred with nine different dogs, so. You're getting all this shit. So you don't, you don't know which, which yeah. trait's going to pop out. It's like out. I said, I yeah. had one before that was predictably unpredictable. Like yeah. you, you just don't know. I mean, and that's, that's more fear. It's more defensive. And it's only so many people can handle that type of dog because you got to yeah. manage it correctly. So with training, it's, you know, situational awareness. What kind of dog do you have? Where you're going? Are you going to be in a crowd? Is somebody going to be like, oh, look at that baby. Let me pet them. And then they yeah. lose their fucking finger. And, but now it's. Typically, that's my fault because I know the type of dog that I have, but yet this asshole came over here and tried to pet my damn dog. So yeah. I don't agree with and but not everybody knows that. Like, Well, yeah, we, we do like we do searches and stuff. They always have a vest on that says like working dog. Yeah. So did, do we have to have someone go along, you know, point people to go with the dog. And if you see other people to we have to go over there and say, yeah. leave a dog alone because people's first things are, can I pet your dog? Mm-hmm. No, your dog. This dog is on the trail of the scent. You're not going to come over and put your hands in his face and just, yeah. then you start over. Yeah. That, it's like, a, it's like a little kid with an ice cream yeah. can. You know, it's like people are like my dog's resource guarding. It like growls around my food. Well, okay. Typically you don't want a dog to resource guard, yeah. but if I'm eating an ice cream cone, I don't want you sticking your fucking finger in my ice no, cream no, cone. No, you no. know what I mean? Well, it's the same thing with a dog. If you're yeah. going to go and fuck with his food, you're yeah. asking to get bit yeah. possibly. So just let him have his food, let him have his bone. But also, you don't want the dog to be entitled either. That's the other problem. Yeah. Too many people humanize their dogs. So when you start treating yeah. a dog like a human, the dog is going to treat you like a dog. So, so that was part of the, and I think we talked about it on a podcast with Eric too, that there was a guy that came and he's a, he's a canine guy from down south. He's done, he's on these big, really, really important high, you know, searches and stuff mm-hmm. for really famous people. But he's gone too. And he's talking about, and he said, you guys don't understand that, like your dogs are tools. Mm-hmm. Like you guys are treating them as your best buddy, which mm-hmm. they can be when you're doing this, but they're tools. So mm-hmm. something happens, you have to be willing to let your dog do his job. And if he gets injured to protect you, that's what it is. That's what it's supposed but to But they don't, but people can't break away from that. They, it's your buddy. Mm-hmm. And I'm, obviously it's a lot easier said than done. If you have a dog and you love the dog, mm-hmm. You know, but yeah, I mean, these, he was trying to explain like, listen, my dog, I love him too, but he's a tool. If I, if something happens and his job is to go and someone's trying to attack me and he takes that guy out, he gets injured. I'm sorry, but he's, he's so, so my kids don't get, you know, it depends on what type of line of work. He's yeah. In too. I mean, you could have somebody that just has a companion dog. So I get it. You yes. Know what I mean, but if you have, if you're in police or you're in, um, yep. you're, you know, you hunt, we've already been on the field. I've been to Texas twice. So We've already hunted where we already stapled up a dog, just gushing blood out of it. We, yeah. we had another dog that the whole lung was hanging out. The muscle was, you know, stapled the dog up. He thought he was going to have to put the dog down by the end of the night. The dog got up the next morning ready for food, yeah. you know, and it's all just a mess. And then it was hunting again in another eight months. Yeah. Um, police dogs, same thing. They could get stabbed. They could get shot. Um, personal protection dogs. There's, you know, I have a buddy up in, up in New York, Crate. He's one of the best trainers, um, Josh with Fearless Canine. Um, you know, that approach, you know, when I learned then from Canine One, which is Mike DeBruzzo, he's all over YouTube, um, got a huge following. That's where we all pretty much originated out of. That's where I met Josh. That's where I met some of these other guys. And um, I'll, I'll go back to that story and tell you how I got, like, mixed up with that. But, you know, some of these guys have – dogs that they train that have non-disclosure agreements because they're that serious of a dog. There's people that are, you know, executive protection that don't want people to know they have that type of dog. There's even a guy, uh, a breeder in UK that has protection dogs. I believe he sold one to for a hundred thousand dollars to some CEO of Goldman Sachs or something. So those type of dogs you don't necessarily hear about, but they're out there. Um, same with the military that, you know, the dog that grabbed Osama bin Laden, you know, it's, it's just crazy. You yeah. know, the amount of shit that's out there that you have no idea. The dogs that are, 
you know, flying out of helicopters with their with their handler. Um, yeah, they were doing stuff with us to do the uh, on uh, zip lines to go mm-hmm. and lower the dogs yeah. down with the harnesses and stuff. And you watch it, and you're like. I can't be right. But then you learn like, no, that's how you got, how else would you get a dog down a cliff if you're looking for, yeah. You know, the other problem too with like, you know, being involved in the dog world, there's a lot of, when you look at um, like AKC shows, like the showing, Mm -hmm. you look at like working stuff, you look at trainers. So people need to have more of an open mind because there's so much closed mindedness where there's a lot of egos in dogs too. So you have a lot of, um, you have a lot of different trainers that want to push different things where I feel you can learn from pretty much all different types of trainers. Like I don't agree with that, that purely positive stuff. Like, yeah, you can purely positive train your dog at first as a puppy and whatnot, but then you have to add in that punishment. The dog needs to get a correction. Um, and I'm not talking like a lawnmower type of correction. Cause there's definitely a lot of abuse that happens in the dog world. And there may be trainers too, that I've know that I've seen that I don't necessarily agree with some of their techniques, techniques that they use. And that's why I reached out to Mike at K91 because Mike at K91, like I saw him all over YouTube and I'm like, man, this guy's like a celebrity. Like I would never think he would ever hit me back or nothing. So I was watching some of his videos and I'm like, this guy's really good. Um, and he, he, you know, he adds the funniness into it too. Um, and I liked how he trained. He wasn't, you know, into sport. I, I'm not really a fan of sports stuff. Um, I liked all that personal protection. So I sent him an email and I just told him a little bit about myself and you know, whatnot. And I'm like, yeah, he's never going to respond, nothing, whatever. So he sends me an email, sent me an email back. And then we scheduled like a phone call. And then I talked to him and he was like, just a normal dude. He's like, yeah, why don't you come up to Paladin center? You know, you can come up and train with us. And isn't it weird when you contact people like that and then you talk to them on the phone and they're just normal. Yeah. And And then you're like, oh yeah, they're just people. Yeah. Like they're kind (laughs) of nervous because you're like, you see like they got a huge following and it's just a normal person just like yourself. So, you know, depending on how like you carry yourself and whatnot, like I get along with a whole group of people. I don't, I don't hold anim- any animosity towards anybody. So I get along with a whole mix of people. And then like, so I met Mike up there and then I met another guy, John, and then another John and then Josh. And it's like Nate. And it's like all these guys and you're seeing all these guys that were on YouTube. It's like millions and millions of views. And it's like, it's crazy. Cause now you're a part of something that you're like, shit, I never thought I would be able to come up here and learn this. So everybody has that mutual um, interest that they all want to learn. And, you know, you're talking different things, different dogs. And um, Mike DeBruzzo, I want to say, is one of the best scientific wise. He started a foundation style dog training. It's changed different um, like 4.0, 5.0. So he's changed his scale of how he how he trains. But for the most part, it, it starts on a pyramid and it goes with like ethology, it goes with the health, the behavior, the attitude, and you know, there's a whole list that goes up because you can't theoretically train if you don't know ethology, if you don't know where the dog's domesticated from. And then you also got to know about health. You got to know behavior of the dog The you know, there's so much that goes involved that's yeah. with it. It's, it's very tough. I don't even consider myself a good trainer because I've, there's always somebody better, you know what I mean? And it's like, I know I don't have that ego about me where it's like if somebody asks me something and I don't really know it, I could text Josh or I could, you know, call Mike or I could say, hey, what do you think of this? Like we just had a thing with with Lucero the other day with a German Shepherd and the German Shepherd um, is a little bit aggressive. It's kind of a fear thing. Um, I think the, the somebody, another dog went after the Shepherd at some point when it was little. So it's got this fear about him. And I'm like, well, Lucero is pretty stable. Let's test him around Lucero. So we had the muzzles on him. And when I was looking at him, I'm like, well, Lucero really doesn't want the conflict because he's just standing like he's, you know, he's just chilling, you know. And then the shepherd, like you could tell he was a little bit like wasn't sure of Lucero, but he also was trying to be a little bit more dominant over the situation. And um, we left him go for a little bit and they were all right. And then at one point, um, the German shepherd like tried to nail him on the side and then Lucero just had him, threw him down, pinned him down on the ground and they were ground and it was, you know, it was kind of a mess, but they had muzzles on, so yeah. it wasn't a problem. But then when I rewatched the video and I sent it to my, when I sent it to Josh, I'm like, what do you think? He's like, well, I actually think Lucero was being more defensive. And I was like, well, why do you think? He's like, well, look at his posture. His posture, his chest, chest was puffed up and whatever. And I was like, well, I thought he was just being more like cool and collective like he didn't necessarily want the the conflict which he didn't 
but he was also given the signs too that he wasn't backing down. Yeah. So, and that you see that a lot with, you know, Dogos in general, they can typically be dog aggressive. I've always seen when Dogos go at it, it's like they don't start the problem, but they'll finish the problem, you know, and it's, that's a big trying, fucking dog. Trying, <laughs> to get, trying to get them off. And but it's he, amazing how much, like how many little signs you have to pick up on and be able to read. There's tons. There's, you know, it could so be did you record it so that you guys could kind of study the behavior yeah, and see yeah. what was? Do and you guys do that a lot yeah. for? Now was that like a client's dog, or you guys were just trying to figure out that in case you saw the behavior in another dog? Um, well, we were tested. See now, well, he's good. He so I was going through a divorce, so he was up at a friend's house up in New York, and my friend that had him. He's a trainer as well, and he was using him kind of like a demo because he was great around other dogs. You could yeah. use him as a distraction, whatever, and he just sits down, and he just he's, he doesn't react. He's pretty good. He's just really mellow. Um, so he's a good test dog, so to speak. Um, the only time I've ever seen him have an issue was in Texas. Um, he grabbed a hold of another dogo, and we had to brake stick him off because of an in, um, a female in heat. What's brake sticking? A brake stick is um, you take a stick and lodge it between behind their like their jaw to pry open their mouth. Jesus, because you're not going to yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. going to get them. But like if you ever get a dog on another dog, you're fucked. I mean, it's depending on the power of them, pit bulls especially. I mean, even dogos, it's just a nightmare. Like even being at a park, my friend got stitches in his thumb. You know, we had to stitch up his his hand one day because we had three boxers. My la- we had a female dogo. I had my boxer, and then something happened. One of them snapped at the other one, and then it was a whole big fucking ball of dogs. Right. And like, <laughs> yeah, so we're trying to get them off. You know, you're bound to get hurt. But dogs are just um, – it, it's t- there's so much to know just in behavior, just in how they um, – just the signs you can see. You see it when – you know, a kid gets attacked. You see it when a person gets bit. The signs are always there. They're always there. When you let hindsight. Yeah. 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 But you don't want to yeah. think it like, you know, and it's the dominance aggression too. That's a whole nother side of it. People are like, well, what's, what do you mean? Well, my dog, I, I did nothing but love my dog. Why, why did he fucking bite my hand off? Well, yeah, you can love your dog too much, you know, and if he becomes entitled and he's dominant aggressive, or let's just say you, um, so I don't know if you read the, the paper, um, was it maybe two, three years ago? A girl named Emmaus got like shredded up on her um, her back deck from a pit bull. Did you remember that story? No. She, um, it was a foster dog. I think it was a male. I think it was about three years old. So right about maturity, like pit bulls, like bully breeds will mature more around like two and a half, three. Somewhere you start seeing those issues come out then. So the dog was always on the bed, always on the sofa. And there was an issue before where I believe it's her boyfriend's son was four years old at the time. <sighs> Look what you just did. Not only did I spill, I spilled it on my phone. And it's work calling. Uh, you're fine. I'll grab a towel. Keep going. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll grab a towel. Go ahead. God, I hate We're going to get fucking electrocuted now. <laughs> nah. No, there's little legs on here. Yeah, see? Anyway, continue. I'm yeah. Sorry. So what was I saying? I forgot what I was saying. The girl, the girl on the porch, and she was being she was fostered. Oh yeah, yeah. So she was fostering his male, and um, I believe it snapped at the four year old, the four year old son. So there was issues. There were signs that she saw issues there, but she kind of you know avoided it. Um, and usually you start to see issues when you're trying to get the dog to do something it doesn't want to do, and that's. That's the um, that's got to be a big problem with a lot of people. Well, that's the dominance aggression deal because a lot of, and and that goes into you know you're trying to muscle your dog or you're trying to suppress the dog. So if you're having issues with your dog, a lot of trainers want to suppress it, and um, that's really not the best thing to do because you're basically just putting a band aid on it for something yeah. to occur down the road. Yeah, you're not you're not addressing it. You're just you're dealing. What is that called? Dealing with the. With the symptoms, not with the yeah, actual problem. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, so some, my buddy, that's my buddy Josh with Fearless Canine, he's always saying it's, you know, it's like that little kid that, you know, you're always smacking around to teach him a lesson. And he finally takes and then, back. Yeah, but, or he goes away and becomes a Navy <laughs> SEAL. He comes home and now you're his old man dad and you're trying to tell him what to do and you go to smack him and he fucking lights you up. You know, it's the same thing with, 
you know, you have a Rottweiler that's eight weeks old, you know, he pisses you off at four months, you're a fucking mess over here, you Listen, see. Listen, because he's got all these fucking knickknacks everywhere. <laughs> his Bronson jacket. His, I know. Yeah, his none of this is. Um, no, yeah, it, it, it's... <sighs> I, I can tell you, like, I, I, I love the people that you try to convince, like, you'll say, like, even with the people that I know, they're like, oh, no, it's it's a working dog. Yeah. And I'll go, oh, like, does he do, like, personal protection? No. We spend the majority of our time looking for people. There is no yeah. time for this dog to also be a protection dog. It's pretty yeah. much, you figure out what it is. Is it an air scent dog? Is it a cadaver dog? Yeah. And whatever they, they do, you work that, yeah. and that's all they do. And it's constant training. These people train all the time. Yep. There is no, oh, he's also a protection dog. Mm. No. I mean, you could no. have, you got to look. Like, let's just say you have a litter of eight pups. Yeah. And this is what boggles my mind sometimes because, like, with this AKC, like, the showing and stuff like that, they could be like, well, all these eight pups are going to be show dogs. Well, how the fuck are you going to sell them as show dogs at eight weeks old? You really don't know what they're going to turn into when they're nope. older. I've always loved seeing dogs that are teenagers and adults because that that's just you see them you see the genetics at what they're at you, and see, you see their what personalities their, their personality they their genetics their grow. temperament everything you yeah. see their muscle build their top line their structure their whole bit and you could breed a bunch of working dogs that are for say search and rescue or cadaver dogs or whatever you may only have one or two out of that litter yep that's good that yep. works you know, yeah, or you may have, let's just say you do a litter of dogos. You may say, oh, well, this one, this one doesn't seem like it's going to hunt that great. You know, this yeah. one would be better as like just a pet or a companion or something. So if you, have you said it's, it's, it's because, and I think it is, like you said earlier, I think it's because of all the breeding and stuff. And it's just picking up on traits Yeah, that one dog might have more of a, a scent, you know, behind it that can actually pick up things and, mm -hmm. and is able to focus in on that. And another dog might just be that's not what they're focused. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when you have a litter like that and you're, uh, you know, you, let's say you're you're selling them for protection or what they're going to be. What do you the, do? They have to keep the dog till a certain age and then they start uh, realizing what they're going to do with it. You know, I think if I if I bred working well, if I bred working dogs, depending on. What, how I wanted to go with it. Like if I was doing personal protection dogs, it's tough because for me, it wouldn't be about the money. And that's where a lot of things get screwed because um, people are more about the money than they are the dog or, you know, whatnot. So if I were to, if I were to do it, I would say, look, yeah, that's got to get weird. Cause if you're focused on the money, then you're going to have those little moments yeah. where you're like, Fuck it, just sell the dog. Yeah, but then how are you going to deal with the problems down the road? Like, what type of contracts are you going to have? Me, yeah. Me personally, like, so because I learned so much from these other guys that I that I really envy in, in the dog training world, I wouldn't want to put my name out there or do something with a dog that I know is either more serious, more civil. I or, didn't even think of the contract issues. Now, if you are buying a $100,000 dog... Is there like paperwork that comes oh, with yeah. it that there's like, yeah. you know, like, is there a fucking extended warranty where if the dog's not I, doing what it's supposed to be well, doing? I'll tell like, you what, I'll tell what you what. What a fucking some, crazy world. Well, some of those dogs too, like, let's just say you're spending a hundred grand on a personal protection dog or 50 grand or 25 grand, whatever the case is. Let's say that dog bonds to you now, depending on what the temperament and the genetics of that dog, if it's not working out with that family, you may not be able to place that dog somewhere else. You know, you could have a dog that, you know, whether it's a Rottweiler or a Pressa, that dog could be more bonded to you. And it may not have that clear headedness where it could go to somebody else and formulate that same type of bond. So, you know, that particular person that's selling that hundred thousand dollar dog may say part of my contract is if you can't keep this dog, you need to put the dog down because the dog's not going to go to anybody else. You know, so oh, that's crazy, too. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, you got to think, because if it's trained to do personal yeah. protection and it's not going to listen to anyone yeah. or respond and then you just it's have not it it's not the dog yeah. it's not the dog's fault it, you know what i mean it 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 does suck because you see a lot of dogs in rescues you see a lot of dogs i mean there's dogs everywhere they breed dogs i mean yeah that's what's bad in easton dude it's so many well the other uh, thing too you have i mean even in the army and the, the special forces they have these dogs and they're breeding their own dogs you know so and there's breeders too, even down south. They call dogs, call dogs, which yeah. you know they're they're killing dogs. Like they have a litter of eight. Uh, well, if they all suck but one, then we're gonna call them all because they don't want their name, their dogs in somebody else's hands. That could be a potential problem for the yeah. breed. Which I tend to agree with that. Um, 
because where are all these dogs going to go on a rescue? You can have yeah. We you, we had that. We talked about that too. About oh, well, it's going to go to a no kill shelter. Well, the no kill shelter. Where do you think it goes after that? To a kill shelter. Yeah. Like you yeah. know what I mean? Like they can't. You literally. Yeah. And when you go to the to the shelters and you look, there's eight billion cats there. Yeah. Like there isn't enough people to take the cats. And no. what I want for my dog, um, he was put up. It was on a, like a teacher website, but we went down and it was just like. Hey, can I go see my dog? He's like, yeah, you'll you'll see him. I was like, well, can somebody go down there with me? He's like, no, you'll you you'll see him. Mm. It was all pit bulls. Yeah. Every single one of them was from some dude in the hood that decided he wanted a pit bull. Didn't train him. Didn't do anything. So you go down there and they're just biting the cages. Mm-hmm. They're all butt up. They're all chewed up. And it's just like, and there was my dog just sitting there, not doing anything, just yeah. sitting scared shitless. Like, yeah. okie dokie. And I was like, yeah. What do you right. do with those dogs? I mean, is there a way to get them back to? functioning so, so they say you can rehabilitate the dog but yeah but if to, to I rehabilitate mean, is to bring them back to you its would know how state. to do that or it would even you would know the steps towards trying to do that but if i went and got a fucking pit bull yeah like what the fuck but it's not like, it's like, yeah. and that's what i said and i i can't stand and i have even mike was saying too that like the like the pit bull breed it has a bad name because people because people have used them for the wrong reason yeah. the but same reason that, you know i tell people the same reason if you had Say they did German Shepherds, and it was cool in a music video to have a German Shepherd. Mm-hmm. You'd have a bunch of German Shepherds yeah. that acted. What did you know, Magnum PI have? The Dobermans, Dobermans with Higgins, yeah. yeah. Which people don't realize that their ears don't stay up like that. Yeah, like crop most them. of the time, you had to crop them, and people yeah. are like, "How goes Mike?" Because my uncle had one, and he was had little like droopy ears, and I go, "It just doesn't." Do they look have a tough. bad rap, Dobermans. Yeah, you can't. You can't get ones. health. You can't get yeah. homeowners insurance if you yeah. have a Doberman. Ah! <laughs> well, it depends on the homeowners. There, there's yeah. like a whole list now. They're starting yeah. to come out of the whole fucking. You can't have. There's so many different breeds, but yeah, yeah, I um, they're great dog, man. They're freaking rock. Pit bulls are great. They're great Spike dogs. Spike collar, you know, <laughs> but they do get a bad rap. Yeah. yeah, and unfortunately, in the rescues, there's just too there's you can't save every dog. No, but then too, you can also. It's funny. We used to joke about this all the time. You can get any fear aggressive dog out of the rescue and put them in your house and have a, a, a home invasion dog. You know what I mean? Nobody's gonna come into your house no. with fear aggressive dog. No. You know, but there again, you got to know how to manage that dog properly because that dog is just not going everywhere with you because he's not stable. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I I don't know. It's tough. There, There's, you can have, you know, you can have your Dutch Shepherds, your Malinois, your your German Shepherds. Um, you see a lot of Dutch Shepherds being used in the police now. There's still a lot of Malinois in the, in the armed forces. Yeah, I think they think you use know. Shiloh Shepherds, I think, are the other ones. Really? Yeah, that's what they search and recover. Big oh, yeah, search. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then a couple. I think one police guy. I don't remember his name. I wish I could give him credit. He had a, a Shiloh Shepherd, real nice. I mean, a dog that it did real well. I mean, it was it was great, but it was same thing. It was on its way out, so now mm-hmm. it's on like the go take it to school dog. Oh, yeah, you know, with yeah, the police yeah, and they show yeah. the kids, and it's like once you get that, that's like your retirement tour. Like you're you're not going out doing what yeah. you used to do. But yeah. Hmm. But Did that's you, what I said. What what if you were to build, and this is a hard question, if you were to build an ultimate personal protection dog, it would have to be by per person. But what would you like think you, you would could, pick? Because like w- without without paying, without playing, and that's part of the problem when people start mixing dogs and screwing with stuff. But without doing any of that, straight up, which one would you take? Yeah. Like what, if I could scientifically make my own breed of a yes. dog, what would I do? Yeah. Oh shit. I'm curious because there's different ways you can go. There's many different ways you can go because, you know, I've taken, I've seen Rottweilers that will just completely crush you and make you pass out from an arm bite. Well, yeah, my my buddy had a German breed Rottweiler, so they're bigger. Yeah. You couldn't, there was no way to correct the dog. Yeah. There was no way you try to correct and you can, but it didn't feel anything. It didn't, it was just like moving a rock. See that you have to know how to, I mean, it's a dominant aggressive type of rock, but those are the type of rock. They're like boulders. Oh, they're just, but I mean, the thing was that here was the thing. It was the sweetest dog possible. So (laughs) the fact that it was this massive dog that was sweet, but if it wanted food, it took the food. And Mm -hmm. if you try to go like, no, and you're trying to, it just, it just, it was too big. Like the kids are like, what are we supposed to do? Like, well, but it, luckily, it wasn't aggressive. Like yeah. it wasn't mean towards anybody. Yeah, yeah. He was more like a dopey dog that just like went wrong. Stays. Yeah, I don't know. 
No, you're fine. I was like, I, I hope that's her. I don't know what the dog's going to do. <laughs> well, wait, this way. Let, let me ask you a question. So, with the dog knowing that the, what the you dog can, can do, over here or over there, were, were you worried at all? No, because you turn around all. and it's some no. dude that's mean. You could have. So the dog would. I was worried much for whoever was at the door. It would pick up on it. Yeah, that word, yeah. If she came in, I mean, if she came in here all sneaky and shit, wearing a mask, yeah. or doing some like weird shit, then I, you could get a growl out of him. Well, see, but it, for the most part, if like every like, yeah, if if we're sitting as long here, as you're la- calm, he's yeah. calm. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, if we if she came in here barreling in with a Mac Ten, we're gonna be scared. So yeah. obviously, he's gonna pick yep. up on it. Yeah. You know. Well, that's why I said I, I was. I said it on the show that we did before that. My dog is great. We got him, and, and, and I got him from the pound, and we did basic stuff with him, and he was fine. And if my wife comes up or my kids and they just start punching me in the arm, he growls and bites me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm the one that's getting beat up. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm not doing it. And so he's yeah. basically like their protector. So yeah. we have him on video. He, during the night, would get up, and he'll go into each room. He'll sit in the room and sit there for a while, and he'll get up and go to the next kid's room, and he'll just all night long go from room to room Looking and I was like, I want to, I want to work on that. Lucero off. Yeah, I was like, I want to, I want to use that, you know, use that for the protection. But I always thought like I'd be screwed. But that time I, I hurt my back and the freaking ambulance came, it was just stupid. My wife, my, my mom called the ambulance and I was like, I can just get up eventually, like it'll be fine. But he wouldn't let him come anywhere near me. Yeah, they didn't. They just didn't. They weren't being mean, but he would just flipped out. Wouldn't let him come anywhere. Now I was like, "Well, look who finally fucking stepped up." Yeah, it's the bond. Years yeah. later, yeah, yeah, it's the bond. Yeah, I mean, as now getting back to what yeah, I the perfect, designed, yeah, perfect dog. So See, you, do you I, want a squattier, or do you want a taller? Those so no, more speed, you know, because it's a so bigger. My so the personal protection dog that I personally like would be a dog that I like the dogs that can transfer. Which means that now there, there's guys. Well, for police, it's bad. For sport, it's bad. For personal protection, I like the dogs that'll transfer because if somebody's coming at you with a knife and the dog gets a hold of the weapon hand, and if you go to switch the weapon to the other hand, the dog will release that and then go for the other hand. Holy so he's shit. following the weapon. So that's yeah. The police type of don't stuff. do that. They just go in one. Yeah, lock and that's down. for lawsuit yeah. reasons too, because you don't want a dog. You don't want a police dog that's nailing people all over the place because then all of a sudden it's abuse it's this it's over it's too much and then it turns into a rodney king thing all over again so you you gotta almost you almost have to watch the police really need to watch we've always talked about it'd be great to have the police have you know an out command so the dog will actually out but then you could have a civilian with a camera and if a cop's yelling out 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 and the dog's not outing well, now any attorney can go and twist yes. that and be like, "This fucking dog isn't trained, and he shouldn't be allowed on a police force." That's why I like when so, they when they teach him German, because so, well, a lot of people don't know what you're saying. Yeah, but they'll still they can, you can figure it out. Yeah, you can figure it out. But I still like that because I I I was always told that that was a better idea too because there's so many words that sound like the words you're trying to say. Yeah, and if kids don't understand the right words and are using them wrong, you want to be able to yeah. know the correct words that there is no doubt that this dog knows. You know, plots means down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. stuff like that. Like, this is what we know because there's no other way. No, some kids going to be thrown out German mm-hmm. unless yeah. you're German. But yeah. But anyway, go ahead. So I would, I would. So what, have, what, what breed is good to, to be able to do that? Is there a specific I, I breed that's better? I would customize my own breed because I've always liked, I've always liked the Mastiff type of dogs. I've always liked pit bulls. I've always loved Connie Corsos. I like Dobermans, Rottweilers, but I liked. You know, do you want to go towards temperament and genetic and characteristics, or do you want to go towards what you want to look like? Do you want a dog that just looks like a fucking killer? <laughs> like, do you want one of those dogs that are that are like you look at? Yeah, you don't. Like, you I am not fucking with this yeah, thing today. Yeah. You know, because you can get a you can get a standard poodle to do bite work. Yeah, yeah, you know? they're pretty. They're actually people don't realize, yeah. but they're pretty. They can be pretty vicious. Oh yeah, they got yeah. a strong. They got bite pressure and all that. So, yeah. um. I like I like how Rottweilers work. I like their their hardness about them, but I don't know if I necessarily like that breed. The, do- the Dogos like him. The characteristic I like with him, but generally Dogos aren't your personal protection type of dog. They're more they were bred to hunt. So yeah. you have a lot of hunters that don't agree with the bite work type of stuff, but some of the hunters don't necessarily understand what you're doing with bite work. Like you're not turning the dog into be aggressive. You're just playing with the dog 
in that drive. That drive is play and pray. So yeah. you're just playing and you're teaching, you're building the dog's bite. It's no different where if you're sending a little piglet in, you know, a little boar, and you're sending them in a cage and you're trying to get your eight week old puppy or 14 week old, 16 week old puppy to, to attack this boar to get used to it. It's the same concept. You're just training hunting versus training bite work, personal protection. And you're not doing personal protection until the dog is controllable. You know, the obedience is tight. The last thing you want is create some type of biting dog, personal protection dog, and you can't control it. You can't stop it. It can't yeah. sit. It can't down. It can't heal. It what can't is? Do. What do you have Lucero bred for? Lucero I got from a, a good friend of mine, Daniel, out in Texas. He, he breeds dogos for strictly hunting. He typically will not place a dog in a, you know, companion home because majority of his stuff is more on the harder side. And plus, he doesn't want the responsibility. Um which I tend to agree because, you know, you don't know. It, 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 the, a dogo is not like your first or second type of dog. I don't think so. You you do have some that can be great as a first dog, but I don't really recommend it. Um, so he was bred to hunt. Um, he was out of a litter, Cazador Criollo, which is another guy, Ed, who's based out of Hungary. He produces some really nice dogos, and that's what's in his uh, lineage um, and I believe Daniel had probably like eight dogs at the time, you know, it was a breeding that he did. Um, and I had a dog from him previous and that one is the one that, you know, was somewhat aggressive. Um, and we ended up putting him down, but, and then that's when he gave me Lucero when I went down to visit him then. Um, but Daniel had so many dogs at the time where he's like, look, this is my hunting pack. I got Mapuche, Mataco, I have Milan, I have, you know, all these other ones and my pack. So Whichever one you want, you can have. So I just mixed really well with Lucero. At the time when I was married, you know, he was just super stable, super confident, um, zero issues with the kids. The kids love him. Um, at that time, he was just he was just perfect to, to bring back. Um, so then, you know, fast forward, you know, two, three years later, you know, the divorce is all done, whatever. I'm back, you know, back. And that's it's great having him around the kids. The kids love him. Um so that that's kind of why now would I he switch him. to personal protection the only protection that i've done with him would be like territorial stuff he's great in the backyard um i've tested him that way where he'll he'll go to grab your hand through the fence like if you're messing around at my backyard or something and he no like he's going to protect his backyard same with the house he's the same way he'll put out a growl now um, without without getting into a, 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 a and obviously it takes time and everything but how do you train for something like like a territorial thing would it just be you just keep testing them, yeah. like kind of have people go up to the fence like aggressively and see how he reacts to so it. Or there's, there's a lot of guys that come from the sport world, so they'll start with like the tug toys, the yeah. bite pillows, the this and the that, and that's all like your prey and your play, like you're building them up. The dog's not really working in defense. Like yeah. your, your drives are on like you know like a whatever you know mm -hmm. however you you know you're explain it like your play, your prey, your defense, um, your flight, your fight. Um, so generally. Um, you're building the dog up just by playing, you know, building yeah. a bite and stuff. And then as the dog gets older, you know, your shepherds, your Malinois, they mature so early. I mean, you're doing bite work with Malinois at like eight months old. Yeah. You know, they're flying through the freaking air because they're just, they're bred to bite. Yeah. Um, I've just always liked the dogs that are more civil and more civil, meaning they're more serious. They're more, they're more aggressive. They're not like your sport type of dog. Um, Lucero is a lot. He's very stable, so I can take him anywhere, and he would be totally fine. Now, if somebody came and like jumped me from behind, yeah, we've done test scenarios like that too. That's how we would start bringing the dog out in defense. So, like, we would walk down a hallway. We'd have you know one of our decoys in a bite suit. He'd have a pool noodle or something, and he'd start beating the shit out of me. And then you know somebody's holding the dog from down at the end of the hallway. Um, is the dog going to react? Is the dog going to want to charge towards the person kicking my ass? Is he going to split, meaning, um, you know, is he going to get between the two people and just like mouth you away? Is he going to go to try to bite? You yeah. know, what's he going to do? And then you take that and you see what level the dog's at and then you start building from there and build the confidence. So the more and more you build the dog's confidence, he knows and you start marking it, you know, whether whatever command, you know, pass off if you're doing German and you want the dog to bark mm -hmm. and alert. It's that packing, you know, you're, you're getting the dog to bite. Um, there's so many different things that you can do. Um you know, it's, 
it's it's how you want to go with it really it's and it depends on the dog too you could say you have an eight week old puppy and say i want to do personal protection yeah with there, is, there is no like but you there is no direction but or there's no yeah, th- yeah there's no book that you can happen. read and go oh we're good yeah so you would start yeah. with all your obedience all your control work everything and then when you want to turn that dog on defensively if the bond's right and that dog has it into has it in them yeah then turn the dog on and see what happens we've had a pit bull that just sat there and just hmm, oh my handler's getting his ass kicked no, that's cool whatever it's just not there there wasn't the dog's thing no you know what i mean no. just didn't want to do it and that's fine so maybe that dog likes to do scent work or maybe that so yeah, yeah. you have to kind of weed through them um that's why if i think if i bred it's like you're you see too much shit in dog world. You can see like sport dogs being sold as personal protection. Like you just shoots in three dog, you know, Oh, I want $10,000 for this dog. Personal protection. Well, it's not personal protection. It's a fucking shits dog. It's yeah. not doing personal. It's just playing around with a sleeve. Yes. You know, I want to see a dog. You show me a for real dog. And then I, I pissed off a Doberman breeder already because she's like, Oh my, I have a dog that's in shits and whatever. I said, that's great. I said, but, I said, if I'm going to buy a dog, a Doberman from you, I said, I want to, I said, can I put a muzzle on that dog and beat the shit out of you? And will that dog fight me off of you? Yeah. So, well, that's, that's uncalled for. We can't, that's no, my, I know my dog's bite. Okay. Well, I want to see if they're good at protection. Yeah. That's, you that, know, isn't that kind of what they're, that they're saying it is? Yeah. If you're selling a dog for protection, yeah. you should, if somebody's selling a dog for protection, it should go through all those tests. You know what I mean? Muzzle testing. I want to see the dog wrestling somebody. Fighting. Are, are, is the dog hitting center mass? Is the dog tar- Is he transferring? What, yeah, because like, how many doing? people are selling a dog just by its looks and a lot all the time? A lot. Look and at they're Cor- lying. Yeah. Look yeah, at Connie lie. Corso's. Connie Corso's gotten. They have gotten so. Because again, it's a it's a big dog. Look, pit bull on steroids. People yeah. want that image. You know what I mean? So yeah. you can have. Connie Corsos that are great, but you can also have some that are nervy. You can have some that are problems. You can have some that bite. You just don't know what you're going to end up with. Um, yeah, there's. I, I feel there's a lot of that in that in that realm that you'll you'll see in the paper like, oh, I do dog training. Well, what do you do? Oh, we do like personal protection, and you look on their history, and they're like, you, I think you just made this shit up. Yeah, like I don't yeah. think you're really doing this correct way. And you, you is know. the pet store dog training pointless? Like Petco, like yeah. their clicker bullshit. Yeah, yeah, I. I those, I mean, yeah, yeah what's we, up, we, Petco? like not listen, not, 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 <laughs> no, so we, we did, we did that with our dog. When we first got him to do to walk on a leash because I was like, yeah. I don't understand how to teach dog how to properly walk on a leash, yeah. but here we go. So, my dog's an asshole and he, he tests the So, at Petco, he was the perfect fucking dog, star mm-hmm. student. You would go, you tell him to sit, he would sit there perfectly still and look at you. You could go down the aisle, you could go aisles over and call his name, he wouldn't move, he would just sit there. Yeah, and then once he saw you, if you went, come, he would run over to you, and he'd mm-hmm. come right in front of you and sit down. And they go, "Wow, he even did that right." Yeah, uh, yeah. We come home, and I'm like, "Okay, this is what we got to do." We, we, the, he did it did work with the leash thing. He understood actually how to work like walk on a leash. Because mm-hmm. when we first got him, it was like, it was like you were just like, well, I tell you, when we first got him from the pound. When I went down there, he that's why I said I knew he had to go because I went down. I was like, you can take him outside and walk with him. Well, as soon as I put a leash on him, they open the door. He was just digging, just taking off, dragging me up the thing. And I was like, wow, this dog's really powerful. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, he's taking off. So then finally he calmed down and sat down and was fine. But I'm like, that's what he would do when he'd walk with him. He would just start to walk. But it it is cool to watch when you get into like hunting mode. Mm -hmm. Like you'd see a rabbit and he would just freeze up and he's rock solid. And he would just sit there and start stalking real slow. And I'm like, my wife's like, what do we do? And I go, let him. What mm-hmm. are you gonna do? You're gonna snap him out of it? Yeah. Like he's in it, man. Like, so you, have you ever got to see your dog hunt? Yeah. Is it yeah. Fo- like what was that experience like? It's pretty interesting. Um, it's you know, boar what was it hunting horses? So, well, so boar, <laughs> so boar, <laughs> he was taking down the fucking elephants. Yeah. 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 So boar hunting is kind of <laughs> barbaric, and there's a lot of people that will pretty much shame on you for it because it's not like. So when you're when yeah, you're boars in Texas, suck. so the problem with boar is yeah. they're trying to eradicate them because they're they're killing watermelon farms. They're destroying they're millions destroying of dollars of, of crops every year. That's they why got, they let them shoot them from helicopters. Yeah, they got yeah. hogs for humanity. They're killing them from the helicopters. They're they're donating the meat. The farmers are like, you know, these guys that breed the dogos and they hunt. They kind of either have contracts or they do it for free, but they'll they'll pick farms and like if it's 20, 30 acres of farmland or whatever. They'll go out and the farmers are like, look, can you get these fucking boar off of our thing? Yeah. They're killing all our shit. So the one night I think when we went out, we had 
six dogos. You go at night? Yeah, we went at night. That's crazy. Yeah. So we got a fucking flashlight, you know, the things on whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then you got the rattlesnake shields because these are fucking rattlesnakes in the thing. Um, yeah, you could step and not see it. And then oh, all of a sudden, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I surprise. Mean, yeah. So, what an interesting thing to get involved in and then push it to that I, yeah, far. I think those dogs clocked like 15 miles that night. Like, because we'll send them out with the GPS collar, the fucking yeah. antenna, the Kevlar cut vest, the whole bit. You send them out and then. So the cur dogs pretty much bay the pig. They'll bay, you know, they'll send out the dogs. So these dogs are just running, boom, 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 like hitting all these trails or smelling these boars out. And then you'll hear the first one, like, row, 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 row. you'll hear like, oh, all right, that one's bayed. You're looking at your GPS. You're like, all right, it's this way. So we're running this way. You get up to that and then the dogos get a hold of the boar. So they're on the neck, the ear, you know, they're just basically holding this boar down. The hunter goes up, stabs the boar under yeah. the armpit. It bleeds out in a couple seconds. It's done. So then you round up that one, and then the dogs are off that one, and then they're on another scent. So I think we got like six boar that night and ran like 15 miles. So you're running from this bay to this bay, and then you're over this bay. Then they're in the fucking swamp. So it's like you're filled with water. You're a muddy mess. You got rattlesnakes to deal with. Oh you know, the God. one that the one night we went, the one when the dog, the little pit bull got, got um, lit up and her lung was hanging out, the same night I'm carrying a dogo back to the truck because it got, it got bit by like a water moccasin. So that night we had to give him an IV for the fucking venom, ra- venom yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So we're doing that. And then the next day the thing wakes up like nothing happened the night before. Like they're so strong. Like they don't, it's like they don't feel pain. They're in their mode where it's like, I'm getting this fucking bore and that's it. And it's that's amazing. And it is amazing how much they can hide pain. Yeah. I know we had our dog. He's, I, I don't know what happened. And, and like I said, we always gave him like, we gave them raw hides. We gave them stuff. And like, we always did it. And they were like, no, it's okay. And then he just didn't, wasn't acting right one day. And I was like, there's something wrong. So I'm sitting there and I'm petting him. And I just felt like his face. That's when I was like, man, I wonder if he got stung with something. Mm-hmm. So I'm feeling, I was like, it's pretty hard. And I lift up his cheek. His tooth cracked in half and was folded uh, yeah. next to it. And he's been like that for, yeah. and I was like, oh my God, if my tooth cracked in half, I'd be crying. And he just walked like that. It was like, no big deal. Yeah. But I, I was always paranoid about those. We want to do that hunt in Texas or in Tennessee. I still want to fucking yeah. go. You go hunt uh, wild boar. Van. But they, they offer dogs to go along. Yeah. And they're just basically round them up. Mm-hmm. That scares the shit out of me because yeah. I don't know those dogs. I don't know what, what how they're going to round them up. What happens if I fire and a damn dog gets in the way? Like I would yeah. feel like a piece of shit. It depends what you're what you're doing. I mean, I think I sent you videos of the hunts of some yeah. hunts. Yeah, it's pretty bloody. I mean, I've seen the ones. Oh, it's brutal. It's yeah. brutal. But they they listen. That's what they're for. Yeah. The day after when I left, the day after my buddy Daniel sends me a picture, it's him and his his buddy's son. They got sixteen boar that night. They were going through the field. He goes, that's fucking he crazy. Goes, they were it's all a lot stacked. of meat, dude. Yeah, they were all yeah. stacked up. It's crazy. It's just unbelievable. The the boar are just causing so many issues down there. Well, they're invasive. They're not supposed to be here. Yeah. Right. They're invasive. They just start yeah. doing horrible things. And then, like I said, yeah, people will go and kill them, sell the meat to homeless shelter, or not sell the meat, give them out to like homeless shelters or do things. And they or they have like big uh, picnics and they'll invite uh-huh. a bunch of people. And uh-huh. I mean, it's it definitely beneficial. But I mean, it's okay for meat. It's not something I want to yeah. like sign up for yeah. but it's good enough no, if you get it's, some it's, i think you believe it's like super greasy yeah and a bear's greasy that's kind of but yeah, it, yeah it's but just you ever different have bear bear chili is pretty good you yeah well because it, it mixes with chili because yeah. of the gre- the oils exactly. and everything. that's why yeah, yeah. yeah. bear chili is really good and the boar meat is not that bad it's Actually, not they, it depends on how you the cut males, it males yeah. the, the males are more like dirty sex it smells like like it's slop like shitty stinky yeah. and, like just horrible good stuff in yeah. your teenage the, years the females are <laughs> the females are better yeah yeah just a better better meat <laughs> sounds like the but seat yeah, no, of that, the fox that that, that place <laughs> that place we want to go to my but my buddy went there and it's in tennessee and yeah you basically pay for the weekend and it's like you're guaranteed to get a board there's so many oh, of them so is it like a it's, it's a, like it's a, a hunting lodge. thing yeah. no it's just a lodge uh, that they own i don't know how many acres but he's like we have so many that you have to. So they give you four wheelers. They give you the whole thing. You go out and shoot. And I go, he's like, dude, I just got to pick which one I wanted. And then the guy was like, Hey man, we were kind of overrun right now. Like you can take more than one because they're just, they just keep breeding and destroying. Yeah, yeah. Richard went to the one where, um, like the, I believe the boar is like the cheapest of the hunt. And then they also have other stuff that you can go do. Yeah. yeah. See what, what I did was it's not, like I didn't go on like a page. You're on the one. wild, yeah. Yeah, just, I was just yeah. like I went to my buddy's house at Breeze. Yeah, like, we should do that. That's like yeah, because 
<laughs> Fine. It's just. A, it's Listen, just I don't a care. Riot. I'll shoot a fucking it's thing either a, way. Well, this is, you don't now shoot the dogs it. You gotta, are gonna do yeah, it. Yeah, I no. know. You gotta Stab run. It. But if I'm gonna go, run. we have great yeah. cardio. Guess what? I am not running <laughs> and letting a dog shoot the. I'm gonna shoot the fucking animal, <laughs> and I'm gonna take it. <laughs> we can do both. I'm not running. I'm gonna shoot it from a distance. <laughs> And then <laughs> that's it. That's crazy because you explained what you said the six and then for them to get 16, like that's a long fucking night uh-huh. of going from pig to pig to pig. Uh-huh. And unless they're efficient, yeah, yeah, then the kill is rather efficient. Yeah. Then it's just the, the longest night is, is just picking or collecting all, <laughs> all the things and rounding up the bodies. Because yeah. when they do the ones in the helicopter, they're flying helicopters over acres and acres. You just see them boom, lighten them up. Yeah, they'll take out like a hundred of them. Yeah, and then it, it takes them a whole next day to go around and pick them all up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's nuts. I'm going to shoot from a helicopter. <laughs> now we're doing no, that. I don't care. Let's shoot from a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So where are you at now with everything? Um, you know, uh, I know you do your other business, um, but, you know, like where do you see yourself going with uh, the training and, you know, what do you have coming down the pike as far as like projects and stuff? You know what? I don't know. It's it's tough. I'd like to say um, it'd be great to win the lottery because if you win the lottery – or you can have your house paid off, or you don't have to do yeah, all no the, bills. Like your normal, like day to day job, it gets tiring. So it's like if you could just do your passion. Yeah. Like if you really want to enjoy doing dog, you need money to do it, or you need an income to do it. And I like it as a hobby because I can go do decoy work. I can train. I don't necessarily take on clients per se because I have so much else going on. That you want another time for I'm, I I almost like just helping people. Like if I can direct somebody and be like, okay, I can help you. I'll, I'll stop over and let me see what the problem is. Or if you want somebody that's going to train, like you need somebody like twice a week or you want to go somewhere, then I'm going to recommend you go see, you know, Josh with Fearless Canine or, hey, check out Mike stuff, Canine One, or go check out, um, you know, why don't you come to the field with my buddy Lawrence? Like I may take you down there to get bit up a little bit so either yeah. you know either down there or i'll take you up to new york somewhere but um you know it's that's it's it's very hard for me because obviously my priorities now are you know my kids of course you know my other job and stuff so the dogs not necessarily like i put them on a back burner but they're still there i still enjoy them so they're still a part of my life and you do um, the training what you said every other sunday yeah, yeah. Right now, we'll go up every every other Sunday. I'll try to do something. Um, now, what do you do when you go? Like, kind of get into what the training is. Um, so if Lawrence is running his class, he has his clients. Oh, down so you're there, helping so. out with so just I'll, kind of like yeah, I'll either help Lawrence an or extra just, set of hands with somebody yeah. who knows what the fuck they're doing. And the the other thing too is if I'm going to somebody's field, like if I'm going up to visit Josh, I'm not going to be like, hey, I'm coming up here and I'm going to take over what you're doing. I'm there to to learn. I'm there to help. If he wants me to clean up a pile of dog shit, I'll help him clean up shit. You know, and I don't care. But mainly I go up there, I put the suit on and I'll help him. And, you know, you got to know what the dog's being taught. Like, you know, is this dog more serious? Is he more civil? Or, you know, what do they want to do with the dog? Is the dog transferring? Because you see a lot of decoys and you see a lot of other guys that are taking bites from dogs where they almost want to punk the dog. Which sucks because your job as a decoy is to build the dog's confidence. Like, you want the dog to always win. So... And that's sometimes I butt heads with other trainers because I'll see stuff that I don't necessarily like and I don't agree with it. I don't agree with certain like the way they leash correct or their command structure. But, you know, and even some guys, even in Holland, they use a lot of harsh corrections. But you can't. How am I going to tell somebody that's been doing something for 30 years that works? Yeah. You know, you got guys that are that are doing dogs for so long and their techniques work. But, you know the other direction of it is you can still get away with no conflict. Like you don't need abuse and dog training. I've seen people that hung up dogs. I've seen people that helicopter dogs. There's just one where Salisbury police department, I don't know if you've seen the video of it. Somebody was videoing it. The dog actually anticipated the bite. It was in the car. They had a decoy that was being like a perpetrator cop gets out he's like put your hands up blah blah well the dog jumps out of the car prematurely and it starts to run towards the suspect and the cop loses his shit what the fuck the grabs a hold of the dog hangs the fucking dog up swings it over his back throws it in the fucking car well if he takes a step back and he looks at it the dog anticipated the bite yep. because the dog knew he was going to get the bite he so knew that he there's pre- a suit there, then that, that means he's exactly. going to go do that. Yeah, yeah he's a job. So he knows what he's there to do. The dog didn't. I mean, in a sense, the dog broke the command. He, yeah. Okay, he bro- I get it. But you could have easily... Now you just suppress that dog. Yep. Now the dog may have a conflict with that handler. So now what's going to happen is, let's just say, 
three or four episodes down the road, this handler decides, well, I'm going to give him a harsh leash correction. And then the dog comes up and bites his hand. Now the cop goes and beats the shit out of the dog. Yeah. yeah. When the dog's like, well, fuck you. You're not going to do that shit to me. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it's just. I'm all for, I know when they do the training with the dogs that we handle, or they're around us that they, they always try to end with wins. Yeah. So even if the dog didn't have a good day that day, or it's kind of picking up on wrong things, they'll still do short little, like they call them like little puppy runs or some short little things to end with a win. Yeah. And everything always ends with, you get something, you get the ball that you get to throw around mm -hmm. and do stuff. Yeah. But I, I always said, and I was like, I never understood that. I was like, if the dog didn't do well all day, like, no, you can't let the dog, like it has to end with a win. It ha you have to oh, build yeah. on positivity yeah. as opposed to you didn't find anything like we're out hiding because we'll do mock searches and we'll have mm -hmm. people go and hide and we'll give them a sent article yep. and place it away. And there's times you're sitting there and you're just like, oh no, the dog's gone the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Like what's, and then you realize when you start breaking down, like, oh, well the wind's blowing that way. Yeah. So my scent is blowing and capturing on all the weeds. Yep. So the dog, yes, saw me or smelled me and then went that way and circle around and eventually they'll get to you. But yeah, I believe that they always do just positive endings. Yeah. You can, we've done that with Lucero actually. We did, we did it in New York in the field where we would, um, like I would rough him up a little bit, like, oh, you know, and I would run away and I would just go on a trail and I would just keep going. Hide behind going a tree or something. Hide yeah. behind a tree. And then, you know, depending on, because your scent's obviously going to carry. So he's going to smell and then he may get yep. off the scent. And, and it's go, different and during then, different parts of the day. Exactly. There's dew on the ground. Your, your, your skin cells collect on moisture differently yeah, yeah. in the morning than they do at night. And it's, yeah, it's a whole big. Yeah. And the then you realize with wind, people don't understand. Yeah. And then some, some are. You know, air scent dogs and some are trailing dogs, yep. which trailing dogs are smelling mm -hmm. for the scent on the ground as opposed to air scent. Yep. They're, yeah, it's yep. a whole. And then you mentioned cadaver dogs, yep. too. And that's like, a whole thing, that's, too. You know what's crazy about those? There's I read an article once, too, where they were saying that there's dogs that can even smell like 30 foot underwater because the. Yes, the, the, yes, the, because the dead, the, the skin cells coming up. Yeah. Yeah. So the one, the quick story, and I might have said it before, was the guy who was doing one of our certifications and. He did my Sartec one class, um, certified for that, but he's dog trainer and everything. He said they had somebody down, um, down in Texas area and they called him because that down there, search and recovery mm -hmm. is another form of, you know, it's law enforcement, fire department, search and recovery. They're, yeah. they're funded. So he had his dog there and he said they were called to a property and the guy was like, you know, his wife went missing and they said, sure, you know, come down, check the property. So he's going around. The guy's like, Hey. Yeah, I'll let you go around. Like, don't come inside my property. So they took the dog. They walked him around, and he picked up a hard scent at the fence. So they they recorded it, took it to court, and said, mm -hmm. the dog is picking up a scent on the property itself. You know, you, we have to allow a, a search warrant to be able to do it. So the guy got all cocky, and he goes, yeah, whatever. He goes, I, unless the dog shows something, you're not coming in my house. You have no, no right to do any of this. So they put him on the thing. The dog immediately followed and went and sat at the door and did its telltale thing, you know. Mm -hmm. They said, we need to go in there. And the guy goes, fine. This guy had, and he opened up his thing, and it was like a hunting cabin, freshly poured concrete with a pile of freaking wood on top of it, but just wood, tons mm -hmm. of stuff. And the dog circled around it, sat on top of the thing. And here it's like six feet below concrete, below mm -hmm. all that wood. They got to go and say, we want to dig this. We want to rip this up. And here there was a dead body. He smelled mm -hmm. through all the concrete, through all the wood, yep. across the yard. This dog picked it up like, it's That's crazy, mm -hmm. crazy. They're doing, supposedly I heard they were trying to do dogs to test for COVID-19. Yeah, they're supposed but, to be able to pick up on some kind of protein or something, yeah. but I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to go. I mean, well, but yeah, the water is the water. Thing. The water, surprisingly, yeah, the how water. How is a dog supposed to smell bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey <-oh>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oops. Yeah, but no, the, yeah, the, the water thing. Yeah, we there's dogs that'll go out on boats and you'll see them going and they just. It's funny. They'll lean forward. You'll see them. They're just just collecting, oh, just yeah. sent right out. And all yeah. that you think about all that decomposing flesh and everything gives yeah. off. Yeah, because yeah, they like, sent they sent from like in their mouth. Yep. Their, I mean, it's it's crazy. It's yeah, just unbelievable the amount of stuff that dogs can actually do. Getting back to the personal protection yes. thing, what how I would design my yes. personal protection dog? You're gonna say it's a dachshund with a mean name. If you could get a dachshund to fly in the air and like center <laughs> center mass hit or, you and knock or you or down. that one show that she didn't call him dachshund, she called him a a dachshund, and a I go hund? shut up, just shut up. Yeah, I don't know, I. I like the dogs that look like the Dogos. I like those bully breeds, but I like them balanced. I don't like the short and fat ones. I don't like the ones that can't walk right. I don't like the bullies. I like the the balanced, the straight top line, the blockhead. 
um, stable type of wingman dog. I like a dog that's going to react, um, that you just look at them and it's like, mm, no, I'm not going to fuck with that. Yeah. dog. Like you don't know what that dog's thinking, but the handler knows he's stable. I don't like the dogs that have too much barrier frustration. A lot of your mouths and your Dutch shepherds, you'll, you'll see them in the back of a car. You'll see them back of a you know, cop car and they're barking their fucking heads off. Yeah. It's like, I can't stand it. Because it all it's pisses like, me off. I'll walk by a cop car and they flip the fuck out and I'm like, hey man. Yeah. Like I don't do shit. Yeah. Like don't don't like you know. They, it's, and I I don't know if that's like I don't know if they're just picking up or I, could, that could be because they're training differently and they're like excited and they think that they're always getting ready to go train. You know what I mean? It's building them up. I mean, we've done it too. Like you're you're slapping on the glass. You're doing so. You're yeah, you get you're excited amping the to, dog yeah. up. Yeah. So you're 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 enforcing that frustration in the dog. The dog wants to bite, so you're bringing out more of the frustration yeah. in the dog, and then it amps him up more. So he's going to want the bite more, and then you're teaching the dog to stay on the bite, re grip, you know that whole bit. But I just don't like. I mean, I love the mouths and I love the shepherds. I they're awesome working dogs. Same with the sport world, the sport trainers. They're great trainers. Um, I just don't like doing it. I just think get the tool for the job. Yeah. You know, whatever job you're gonna do, get that tool. If you're gonna yeah. do Schutzen, get that type of dog. If you're gonna do police work, get a Dutch Shepherd. If you're gonna do, you yeah. want, you know, you want somebody to just a junkyard dog, then go to the rescue and get a fear aggressive type of dog. It's gonna light it's gonna anybody flip up. up. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. flip out and look mean. And so it's, I could go, I could go so many different ways with it because there's. There's been my Lawrence with with L.A. Hard Hunt. He has um, and I think I, I want him. <clears throat> you're going to take a bite from that dog. That's the video that I had on TikTok that hit over 10 million views with the guy. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That wasn't that was that was a puppy from that litter. Snap is is a Malinois cross. And that's his, a wonderful name. So that, I know. Yeah, I his believe bite, they wrote, uh, I got the power. Yeah. His, his white pressure <laughs> is just unbelievable. Yeah. You're going to put the suit on. That's why I said, yeah, I, don't well, think, I, I don't think you realize, like I, I've seen people go and put the suits on, even for like the police dog and stuff. And you realize how much power I've and been how they're to able to utilize four years and how I'm, they, and I'm how they can ready to do this, yeah, how they can utilize all of that power yeah. and just have leverage. And just use it like you're, it's going to be surprising. No, because I want to start wrapping up because I want to get into what we plan on doing. And then after we do it, we'll come back and like right. do a second show. Yeah, that's cool. But like, what's the plan for that? Because I've been talking so to a couple if, people about it. And so I, if Matt's going to come down and shoot it in like super slow mo. Yeah. And like, so if I took <laughs> you down to like Lawrence's field, he's in King of Prussia. So if I take you down there, um, we generally do bite work and protection stuff towards the end of class. So he does his, you know, his puppy stuff, his obedience type of stuff, and then they'll do their bite work and whatnot, personal protection stuff. So um, it could be anything. It could just be dogs that you're going to, um, you know, we could we could escort you. We could hide you in the woods. It could be a search and find and then light you up. It could be you're going to attack somebody. It's I'm in for a, anything, everything. You want to do something scenario. all day, I'll well, do stuff all day, it, whatever it, you want to do. I'm pretty fit and I'll get burned out fast. Like Lawrence always busts my ass because I'm always huffing and puffing. I'm always drinking water because you're sweating your balls off. In yeah. That suit. It's yeah. They, so they don't hot. breathe. No, no, you don't breathe. It probably feels you do, they like don't, what I carry And they don't now. breathe and it's heavy. It's a lot heavier than you yeah. think. So with it, like if I had you take a bite from Snap, it, it's going to suck. So you're not going to want to stay on that <laughs> bite that long, <laughs> especially if it's on the leg. If it's yeah. on the leg, forget it. Um so that so I had a video with him. Um, we had another decoy in a suit, Sean, um, and he's funny because he's so animated with what he does. He's uh, we have a video of him and the other guy that's filming it too is just laughing his ass off because the dog just hurts that bad. Yeah, you know? it's like, are you really acting or are you? I don't think he's acting because he he fucking sucks. Um, and if it hurts so, that much through the suit, that's gonna yeah. fucking suck. Yeah. So yeah, there, I yeah. mean, obviously I'm I'm colored on my arms, but like you guys at don't have tattoos, you'll see their arm. I mean, they're bruised yeah, up. Yeah. Bruised it's, and broken blood vessels. It's freaking and, horrible. So yeah. it's not going to be fun. Like, it looks yeah. like Indian burns. Yeah. yeah. So if I, then if I took you up to Josh at Fearless Canine in New York, you know, there's, there's a Rottweiler there that's, his name's Wolfgang. His bite pressure is just intense. Um, I got a video where he actually, he came off the bite and then he got like real close to my face because my face was kind of down, I was taking the bite and then he got off and he's like, you know, gave me like that social correction in the air. Um, he would be a good dog to take in a nice arm bite so you can feel that pressure. There's another dog, um, Smokey, who's a real nice Mal. Um, 
that dog's all personal protection and, and the handler she's i believe she's 22 years old she's really good she's really good at handling that dog because typically somebody with a mow it's it's so difficult you know if you don't have your command structure right and you don't you know you don't do the right things with those type of dogs they're not for everybody it's a lifestyle you, know? you yeah. that's what you do i remember a trainer is a trainer yeah. that i met in massachusetts another it's funny because you have different like not clicks but you have different sections like massachusetts like there's a guy steve roberts that's really good up there you have jared wolf he's got wolf pack he's really good um uh, Josh Knowlton, I think that's how you pronounce his last name. Like he's, they do a lot of PSA stuff, which is protection sports. Um, so Steve is a very good trainer, very good decoy. Um, I was up there and, and Jared the one day said, um, Ma- uh, Belgian Malinois, it's another name for don't fucking get one because yeah. you don't, you don't know, you know, they could be swimming around in a pool. They could be freaking running 15 miles and they're ready to do more and more and more. Like they just have no off switch. They're just that drivey of a dog. Yeah. No. Um, so there, there's just, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I would pick. Like I said, getting back to that whole protection thing, what I would, what I would make and get it just, I'd have to see the character of the dog because I could go any way with it. Yeah. It's yeah. Just got to mix with what I want. Um, I'm excited to do it. I think, uh, cause with having Matt on board, um, like he shoots stuff professionally for a living. Um, so whoever, you know, we decide to do it with, you know, they'll at least get a fucking, you know, yeah. a highlight commercial out of it. And cool. if we're down there for the day, like I, I'm going to talk to Matt about how we're going to film it because I want to kind of do a vlog style, which is like kind of going to be like how we were talking, like doing the van stuff. So I think I can get a whole bunch of different content where at least they can have like a buttoned up thing to showcase, you know, what they want to do. And, you know, there's, if we if we spend, you know, the day there and we can get a lot of cool shots, I think it'll just be something really cool to, uh, I don't know, to showcase. I think it's crazy that you do this shit. I like that you literally found a hobby and pushed it to the extent of that. You're now like yeah. living in this world. That's just so bizarre, but I love stuff like that. Um, and then even when we were talking online, I was like, you can ask him when we first started the show and it was just audio. I've been trying. I ran into a cop was trying to talk to this cop and to get me gave me his number. I'm like, who's the canine guy? I reached out to a couple people that said they would do it. And then they just never got back to me. And I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. I don't know why at all. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be terrible, um, but it'll be good footage and it'll be fun to call back to the show. But uh um, when we do it all, uh, we'll kind of like showcase the video and then I'll bring you back and then, you know, it'll be a different style podcast, but we'll just yeah, bullshit be, about what you're doing. Yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah. I've met so many, so many different people. I have, I have a lot of friends that are police officers. Um, you know, a, a buddy of mine's a sheriff at Westchester in New York. You know, I think he does something with like the narco stuff, you know, Josh with his training, he's doing stuff, um, under the radar type of deal, non-disclosure stuff. You have Lawrence doing his stuff. Like I said, he was originally from Trinidad. His dad had the security firm out there. They were that doing all crazy. They were doing all like Dobermans yeah. and pit bulls. Lawrence was in like the local paper in Trinidad for all that stuff. So his knowledge and then where he's went from there, um, like he's worked with energy dogs in Texas. So he came a lot from the sport world, but I've also seen a lot of dogs, that he has trained and produced that are like, holy shit. I seen a Corso that he had that I was like, God damn. Like I would, that dog was one of my favorite dogs that he had, you know, the bite pressure from that thing was just incredible. Um, and, and that's why I always, I joke with Josh too. Cause I, I always say with, with Lawrence, I'm like, if I could take some of Lawrence's stuff that he breeds and like how he, how he um, like caresses the bite and builds that bite. But then you get Josh with all his like scientificness and all his, if that's even a word, scientificness. If you get all his, um, like his control, the leash handling and all that stuff, like some of the stuff up there is just crazy. Like how you can get the dogs to just be so obedient. Um, But that's the main thing. Like what we strive for obviously is, you know, safety, your leash handling, situational awareness because you're handling a dog you know so yeah um and there's tons of outside influences walking down the street mm-hmm. you, you know you have, that's what people don't I, that's what i hate when you see people walk through town and they're like hey i got my dog on a leash and you clearly they don't see that hey there's a like six bunnies over there and hey yeah. this guy's over here he's got this in his hand and like they don't pay attention yeah they just think it's a stroll and they're just you know the dog's just hanging out yeah but no dog's looking at 18 million things yeah. And, and that's, pick, yeah. that's the other thing too. Like, you know, you you teach like your leave it. Okay. Well you can teach the leave it, but is the dog really, we just had this conversation the other day about 
leaving? Is the dog actually mentally leaving it? You know, so it, there's there's so many things that you need to look at that you need to understand because yeah. you can just train a dog. Yeah, I can get a dog to sit down, whatever. But when you start getting into those aggression cases, you're gonna you need to start learning more and more and more. That's why I don't think not everybody knows everything there is to know. I mean, there's there's guys that are top top like world class canine trainers that still probably ask other people yeah, for advice. And stuff. Yeah, you know it's there. There's so many guys you can follow. Like Larry Crone's another one. He's in Kentucky. Great guy. He does awesome stuff with some of his dogs. Ivan Balbanov, he's another guy in Florida. I think he's like premier protection dogs. He sells dogs upwards of like $100,000. But he came from Schutzen, so he does a lot of Schutzen stuff. You can't knock him because his stuff is incredible. He's like number one world champion, and he also does protection stuff. So you're not going to tell him no different. Yeah. Um, Hans Peggy in, in, in Holland, he's produced some of the best police dogs that they're using all over the U.S. now. Um Gold Coast Canines, another one in California. They're on Instagram. They use a lot of Peggy stuff. Even South Whitehall, like kind of by my area, those guys have a Peggy Peggy line Dutch Shepherd. Um, I don't know what Salisbury has now. They had a Shepherd, if I remembered right. Um, Allentown, they have a lot more police dogs that are on the force. So, yeah, yeah it's it's crazy. Um, it's just cool. It's just a cool thing to be involved yeah. in. But again, you have to be open minded, and, and again, you're gonna always see abuse in it. Um, dog fighting's a whole another thing. That's a whole fucking other underworld of shit. I had to learn all about the dog fighting stuff. I've seen videos of dog fighting, you know, freaking electrocuting dogs that didn't make it. You know, or you know, it's just crazy shit that you see. That's just unbelievable. That that just goes on that you have no idea. Um, yeah, people suck. Yeah, it's just what it comes down to. It's yeah. people. It's not really the dogs. And then it's it's there's over there's the overbreeding there's so many in rescues you don't want to say well just put the dog down because now you're an, now you're inconsiderate now you're yeah. not compassionate you're trying to save the dog you got vegans which i'm great friends with a lot of vegans but they don't agree with hunting they don't agree with, so you have a lot of like non-open mindedness where you don't like you never want to talk about religion you never want to talk about like shit that's going to piss somebody off i can sit here and talk about religion dogs anything and i don't get mad about anything I, yeah. you can call me a fucking asshole and i'm just like oh if that's how you feel about me yeah mike calls it out when you're not looking yeah I so did. <laughs> it is what it is you know but i i just like to learn from pretty much everybody you know sure even like the petco positive trainers yeah you can take that so far i agree with you all positive at the start but you do need to correct your dog you're yeah. gonna have to yeah and if you're gonna have issues at some point that purely positive shit just isn't gonna work no Rainbows and unicorns. Yeah, it's until you get bit or yep. until your child gets bit. Now you're reaching out. Rivers of blood know. and rainbows and unicorns. Yeah. <laughs> well, you also don't want ego to set in too because there's a lot of trainers that come across with that ego where it's just like they're dicks, yeah. you know, and I, I don't necessarily agree with that. You want to help somebody, but you can all, it's, it's, you can also be like, oh, well, this, this handler doesn't know what they're doing. But you almost feel like, okay, take a step back. Don't be like, okay, well, that person's an idiot. Why don't you try to help the person and be like, okay, look, yeah. I'm going to teach you a few things. Try this. But you have to be open to, well, if your dog is this type of way, you need to It could be really, you. Yeah, you really need yeah. to figure out, is this dog right for your family situation? Because yeah. yeah. not every dog is right. Not every dog can be saved, and it's unfortunate. But yeah. It's really do? interesting seeing the actual layers and like how you're talking about the open mindedness and then you actually see how open minded you are to like the hunting and everything. Uh, but to understand how far that goes back to how you control your dog, how you do everything is all like on these steps that like I never looked at dogs that way where now I'm going to. But like it's super interesting what you do. Uh, I think you just getting into that uh, and doing all the stuff you do is uh, I don't know. It's one of the cooler people I've gotten a chance. Sometimes when we do interviews, I just like listening. Yeah. And this has just been yeah. a crazy world that I've never even remotely leaned towards. Like, yeah. I've, I've always had dogs growing up. I'm definitely going to get a dog down the road. Um, but, like, I never knew. Like, I always had interest in, like, the police dogs and, like, you know, like, uh, just seeing dogs and like john wick movies and like i was i was like ah those dogs are awesome like those mm. badass fucking dogs from other countries yeah. but then to hear these handlers and everything and then there's like these sector dogs that are being sold oh, for yeah. like 150 yeah. you know, hundred thousand of yeah. dollars like that's crazy yeah. yeah you know um 
what was I going to say? I was going to say something else too. We, we've also talked about, you know, with the police force, they take their handler courses and there's different methods, the way the police use to train dogs. And we've always thought that, you know, if you could train some of the police dogs where you could actually, if you were breeding police dogs and you could come up with like your own training program and say, okay, I'm going to give you a green dog and we're going to place them with a green handler. Then the dog should have a contract with, we're not necessarily selling that dog to them. It's going to come with a training package where we feel that that police officer should know like everything about handling the dog the right way not through there because i've seen some actual police canine handlers that suck that really didn't know what the fuck they're doing you know and then the dog's coming up on the leash a dog got returned it was missing all its canines because they beat the shit out of the dog it had to get titanium implants so the the dog's just too serious and they didn't formulate a bond with the dog so now they're beating the dog thinking that that's the way to do it and it's just not going to work so um you know, I, I don't know. There's just so many different, so many different things. It, the dog world is just so crazy when you yeah. start getting involved in it and you start seeing what's around. Um, that's why I say I just have an open mind to pretty much, yeah. pretty much all of it and just take it all in. I, I, I love animals. I love dogs. I like, I don't necessarily disagree with hunting. I do disagree with like hunting, like if they're going to go to the freaking whatchamacallit and shoot a lion. I don't agree with that. Like, yeah. I think you should leave fucking that shit alone. Like, pheasant, you know? pheasant hunting. Yeah, like, Hey, I we're just... going to release a hundred pheasant yeah. in this area and you can just go and it's like a bunch of rich dudes it's actually from New York. The only way I hunt is pheasant hunting. You're a lion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you for coming on, man. I want to give you a chance to uh, plug, um, you know, Los K9, I'm going to have tagged and everything, but you could also plug uh, the kitchen stuff, even though you said you're pretty much booked out with that. But oh, if anybody crazy. wants to follow you on social media, where can they best find any of this out at? I'm, I'm pretty much just Lucero K9 Academy. That's that's what I do, like, personally. My, you know, our business, my brother, myself, my father, we have Kitchens by Design. We do a bunch of remodeling, um, and we're not, we're so booked out to the next year. Like I said, I should have my brother on here because that's more like, that's his passion. Yeah. A hundred percent. I would have him, have him on, you know? So, um, we do a ton of that stuff too. Um, yeah, I mean, we just, just try to keep it interesting, man. I mean, I'm into so much stuff, you know, cars, dogs, remodeling kids, you know, I, you go, you could have me on here for three hours. Yeah. Just talk. Well, I'm excited to talk about you bring people back there. I mean, you weren't nervous for this at all or not that I could tell, but like, after we do that and spend the day together, like, and then you podcast, like, after that, like, that's yeah. going to be a really cool podcast. Well, you got to let me know if you want to spend, it's about two hours to get up to where Josh is at in New York. So if you want to go there, it's going to be an all day event. You yeah. don't get home till like six at night. If you want to go to Lawrence, he's right in King of Prussia. So we can leave in the morning. We'll be back and we'll be like, Lucero, off? No, off. She's giving um, him butt rubs. So we could. I do the same thing. So wait till his lipstick comes out and then you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so, yeah. So we she could just go to. stuff like that. We could go to. Be <laughs> like pink or, pink or red. <laughs> so if we go to King of Prussia, that may be a, an easier trip. I'll talk to Matt. Whatever, whatever Matt's down with, you know what I mean? Like he's the one who's. Uh, you know, going to be filming and stuff. So I'll see how much time he has. I got to make sure you keep your, your fingers got to stay tucked. Because yeah. Some dogs will go for skin. So I would like you to keep I'll, I'll your bring, fingers. You're going to be so nervous. Like, no way. I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah, I'm going to be like, Ma, where's my mittens? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have a quote or anything to close out on? I don't. I was, I spilled, right. I already spilled a beer. And, no, you're all right. It, I'm you, surprised that electrical outlet's still I'll tell you working. What, that cider was pretty good. That's it good. Is. There's I more. I haven't, I haven't had, uh, what was it? Angry Orchard? Yeah. Look at this fucking thing. <laughs> I haven't had Angry Orchard in such a long time. It yeah, it's no, good. It's, I tell you what, it's the reason I got it too because I was tired of like the, I had a bunch of IPAs back to back to back, and I'm like, I just want something. If it's hot out, I can go and drink it and just and sit there. And Kara got it. me in so I drank Angry like Orchard. six of them over the weekend, like on the Saturday. I was like, this is beautiful, and it was hot, and just kept drinking. I'm you like, get fucked up? No. Yeah. Uh. All right, uh, if you're a first-time listener, first-time watcher, anything first-time, it's neveragainstudio.com. We have a bunch of information on there. If you're a small business and you're looking for help, I can get you apparel. We can do commercials, media, websites, anything you need, we can help you out with. Uh, the other thing we're doing is nazoammo.com. We are moving Keystone Munitions. I have a shit ton of 9 millimeter. Uh, if you're local, you can pick up on Fridays, or uh, I can ship to you anywhere in Pennsylvania. Uh, check out nazoammo.com. We're 
going to be doing something for the 4th of July. And uh, Jeremy's coming on next week. So that'll be Keystone Munitions. I'm excited. We've been trying to have him on for a while. But with everything going on, he's finally back on his feet. And his I don't think anything's going to be normal for him for a while in the, nope. the ammo world. But uh, he's back in business. So uh, nazoammo.com, neveragainstudio.com. Thank you so much. I guess the next time we'll see each other, I will be getting bit by one of those dogs. That's it. We're done. <laughs> it's an awkward. You're end it. Yeah. And the show will end now. Yeah. <laughs>